Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to My Hero Academia Season 3, Episode 12. So, yeah. <laughs> Whew, last episode. Last episode was insane. It um, had some backstory, had some amazing action, and a really emotional ending. With All Might finally passing the torch for good as he lost the last traces of his power. Which means that All Might will unfortunately have to retire as a active hero. But, as I said last time, that doesn't mean he's going to be retiring completely. He can still act as a teacher and a mentor to Izuku, and he can still work at the school even. Um, just because he can't physically do certain things anymore, doesn't mean he can't still teach, you know? Because um, he still knows what it means to be a hero, and he still knows what to do to help others along that path. Um, so yeah, that's definitely where I hope it's going to go, at least. I really don't think they should uh, try to make it so that he can't even do that anymore. I think that would be silly and stupid. Um, especially since the public seemed to be completely on his side still. Like, the public didn't turn against him or anything. The public aren't, like viewing him as like lesser of a hero just because of his weakened state they continue to cheer him on they continue to back him so yeah um also to note uh not regarding last week's episode or even this episode um i found out today that my hero academia will be going on a hiatus in a couple weeks there will be no episode on saturday the 7th of july uh, there will be one next week on the 30th of June, but the week after that, there won't be an episode. But it's only that week. So it's, they're basically going to take a week off after next week's episode. Um, which is fine. They're allowed to do that. Um, but yeah, it's like, okay. <laughs> I mean, they, they do what they want to do with that. And it's like, it's probably a good idea because... This week's episode and maybe next week's episode will kind of probably close out this arc and then bridge into the next one. Um, so then when they take the break on the 7th, uh, that will like give us a little bit of a breather after how heavy this arc has been. So when they return on the 14th, they can get into the next arc with us kind of just taking a bit of time to cool down, you know? Um, because cool downs are important. <laughs> um, everybody needs a rest now and then. Everybody needs to take a break. They can't just, we can't just expect to go all out on this, like, constantly without having any kind of rest in between. So yeah, it's, with how heavy, again, these past episodes have been especially, it's probably just a smart idea. So, yeah, the 7th, there will be no reaction to My Hero, because there will be no episode. <laughs> um... What that means is there will just probably be no videos on the 7th at all. Because um, uh, MLP won't be back from that from its hiatus yet. Um, I don't know. I think at the beginning of July or something like that, uh, Steven Universe is, is actually coming back too. I think there's going to be a new set of episodes then. Um, I, I might be wrong about that, but I think that's what I heard. That new episodes are coming at the beginning of July. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to mention that real quick, because that is kind of important. I'll probably mention it again next week as well. Um, so yeah, I know nothing about this episode going in. I haven't been spoiled on anything. Um, so I'm excited to get into this. So, we are going to do so. <laughs> so when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow links to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in... Everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in today, and I'll see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we will begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Okay, so, last week, if you remember right, I I lost it quite a bit. I, I was bawling. Um... <laughs> And I stated that My Hero Academia finally surpassed Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood as my favorite anime of all time. Something I honestly 
uh, expected could happen, but never really expected to happen. Uh, it, it was just, it's kind of like this uh, insane idea to me because Brotherhood has been my favorite for so long. But like I said last week, last week's episode and just every how everything connects together, not just last week's episode, uh, but everything as a whole and how it all built into that. It, it I, I couldn't deny it any longer. I just couldn't. Um, and then we get this week's episode. This week we have the aftermath of this arc. Um, sort of the, definitely what I was thinking uh, this week and next week's episode are going to be, like kind of in between stuff to branch into the next arc. Um, so what we have here is, yeah, just the aftermath of everything. What's going down, uh, we see how the police are reacting, we see how the school's reacting, and even some of the parents. We get to see three sets of parents in this episode. Um, first off, we see Jiro, uh, Kyoka Jiro's parents, and they're amazing, they're hilarious. Um, her father appears to be a rock star, or at least uh, he um, really loves rock music, because it, it definitely kind of had the vibe, not only with his appearance, but like it showed the, like, the little thing uh, where he was like yelling into the mic and everything, and you saw in the background, uh, behind the couch and everything, there are all the amps and whatnot. Um, I could believe he's a rock star. I could believe it. The mother, meanwhile, seems so prim and proper. Uh, it, it was kind of this great, like, just fantastic, uh, like, what's the word for it? Uh, just, I, I guess just difference in how they uh, are designed and how they present themselves. That makes it just come across as really cool. And um, I've always liked Jiro. Uh, I, I, I like almost all of the student characters. Um, but Jiro, actually, I just always was fascinated by her character. I wa I've always wanted to see more. I've wanted to know more about her. Just the kind of stuff she likes. I've seen fan art and stuff of her, like, rocking out on a guitar and stuff. And now, I mean, this kind of built into that. I wonder if, like, the person who drew that had read the manga and knew about her connection to rock music and stuff. Or if that just kind of uh, happened just because of her kind of punk look. Um, either way, it, it's awesome. And I, I definitely see her as that kind of character who's kind of like into rock music, kind of a little bit rebellious, but not completely. Um, so yeah, I, I like that. Um, but we also saw Bakugo's parents. Uh, this is something that a lot of people have been waiting for. Um, now, here's the thing. I do know Bakugo's mother's name. Um, I have been spoiled on it. It's not a big deal or anything. Um, but I do know her name. It's Mitsuki Bakugo. Uh, sort of like how his name is Katsuki Bakugo. Um, she is adorable. Like, I love her design. She is cute as hell. Um, but even beyond that, um, I love her character. Uh, because, again, we see, as I said during the reaction, we see that Bakugo got his fiery side from her. But at the same time, she's more in control of it. Yes, she has a temper, as was clearly shown in her interaction with her son. But she also knows how to control. She knows when to take things seriously. She knows how to just hold back and, and re be respectful and uh, just realistic about things. She's definitely not as aggressive as her son. Not by any means. Um, she's, uh, she's very, very loving and caring as well. We saw that just the way she was talking about him. Um... Yeah, it's just fantastic. And the father seems a little timid. Um, and that actually brings me to something, because I had a theory. I had a theory um, early on in the series, and I think I mentioned it when I started reacting to season two. Um, I believe, yeah, I believe I reacted. Did I react to season two? Now I don't even know. <laughs> uh, but I believe I, I've mentioned it before either way. Um, I think I reacted to season two. Yeah, I, I believe I did. Either, again, either way. Either way. Um, I believe I mentioned it before, and my theory was that Bakugo's aggression and his violent attitude, I, I was thinking maybe something had occurred with his father. Maybe his father abandoned them, or maybe his father was abusive or something, or just not really, like, caring like he was kind of just there but not really like there you know what i mean um those are all of my kind of thoughts uh, on it and this episode kind of disproves that i mean we don't get to know a lot about him it, it definitely focuses more on bakugo's mother 
But the father seems like he's kind of timid, but still caring and everything as well. He definitely doesn't seem like what I thought. And we kind of do find out, though, why Bakugo is like this. As his mother basically puts it, he's just received all of this praise, and it's kind of gotten to his head. And it's just basically corrupted his viewpoint on the world. But as, we, as I've mentioned as well, we see that he is changing. He is growing. Um, uh, she mentions how he was always, like, extremely smart, he, uh, extremely talented. He has this amazing quirk, and, and it's kind of just, like, built up to create this, like, egotistical uh, rage to him. Which, I mean, of course, he got his aggression from his mother, but built in with that ego and stuff, uh, it kind of, like combined into this uh, even more so super aggression I guess you would call it um, you know what I mean so that's really interesting um, but then the final uh, parents we get to see in this one are Izuku's mother we don't see his father uh, apparently uh, his father works abroad and stuff so it's not surprising we wouldn't see him and here's the thing with Jiro's parents and Bakugo's parents, both sets of parents agreed uh, uh, to the dorm proposal. But then we had Izuku's mother, who I, who you would think would be the one who would agree, because she's a lot more easygoing, a lot nicer, a lot more. Uh, she knows that this kind of thing is what Izuku wants and all. But no, it, it, she actually flat out says she doesn't agree with it, and and it was actually surprising to me. Um, but once she started to explain it, once she started to explain and just talk about, like, her feelings on all of this, and you can't blame her. You can't even slightly blame her for that. Like, in fact, like I said during the reaction, it kind of just goes to prove how great of a mother character she is. Like, there are some great parent characters in anime. Going back to Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, uh, Maze Hughes... And his wife, uh, Gracie, are phenomenal parents. Both of them are. Uh, and, and there's plenty of other anime that have just amazing parent characters as well. And everyone's always said, and I've always said as well, that Inko Midoriya, Izuku's mother, is one of the best mother characters in anime. She has this undying support for her son that's just phenomenal love just she's cute as hell and she worries like rightfully so about her son and everything that's going on and this episode i think really hammered in like gave us some real precedents for why all of us love her so much already because it shows how much she cares and how much she's thought through about all of this it shows that she takes all of this very seriously and she's even saying that she's not wanting Izuku to give up on his dream of being a hero. She just doesn't really trust UA as much anymore. And again, it's perfectly reasonable. But All Might manages to convince her. And I'm almost kind of disappointed by that, if I'm being honest. I actually was very interested in the idea of maybe Izuku, at least for a time, not going back to UA. Going to another school or something. Um, it, it sounded like an interesting idea, and his mother being just unwilling to let up about it. But then Izuku brought out the letter that he got from uh, the kid, whose name I cannot think of at the moment, um, about how he was a hero to him. Um, and, and then Izuku, and, and not Izuku, All Might got on his knees and bowed to them, pleading to them, pleading to Inko herself to trust not in the UA that is standing today, but in the UA that will be there in the future. To trust in the changes that they're already starting to implement. As we saw with the principal in this episode, they are going to be changing things. They are going to be making some adjustments. Um, and it's because they need to, especially after all of this that's happened. The break-in uh, in, the, in the first season the entire stain incident, all of this, and now especially with this, with the training camp uh, attack, and now the entire events uh, with what happened um, 
minus blanking, um, with all for one, and uh, his gain and all of that, yeah, a lot has happened. And Inko has every right to be upset about it and to be wary of of UA. But UA is trying to change because they realize that this is not acceptable. And so All Might pleads with her to trust in where UA is going and that he will continue to be there for Izuku and to protect him and everything to his best ability. He even says he's willing to die for it. But Inko's like, no, I, if you died, like, that would kind of ruin everything. You're Izuku's entire reason for living. You have to stay alive. Promise that. And he promises. And Izuku kind of promises that he won't make her worry anymore. But again, I don't think that's going to, I don't think he's going to be able to keep to that. Because... One, I think that would make for a very boring series. <laughs> if, if we're being honest, I think it would make for a very boring series if Izuku uh, wasn't able to get into any more, uh, I guess you could say, trouble. Um, th there needs to be more conflict. We need to have that. And this show's been so amazing at it. So we know that's not going to change. We know that they're not going to take away the conflict. Um, we don't know what the conflict will be going forward, um, but... You know that Inko is going to continue worrying. But I really hope that everything continues to go well with uh, her and whatnot and just her feelings towards all of this. I hope everything continues to really work, you know? Uh, this this episode was, it, it was definitely a, a bit of a, a breath after the last one it was definitely taking a breath it's like okay we're, we're coming off of all of that just intensity but at the same time it was still important it was still some big stuff one of course the dorm system is going on also here's the thing if they're going to have dorms i i assume they're going to probably be uh gender separated um which i don't agree with personally but you know how these things can be especially Especially, I don't. I don't think Japan is as progressive with, uh, like, male and female equality as the U.S. would be. Because um, here's the thing: I started college back in 2011, which, admittedly, was a bad decision to start like right after graduating high school. But I went to uh, a college in the area, I guess you could say, um, that had dorms. And there were male dorms, there were female dorms, and there were co-ed dorms. There were actually co-ed dorms where you could room with people of another gender. And it's just like, okay. Um, I was in an all-male dorm personally. I, I don't know if I chose that or if it just kind of happened. Um, and again, that was bef well way before I came out as a trans, uh, trans female. So at that time I did identify as male. Um, so that's why. Um, but yeah, it's like, I was in an all-male dorm and everything was kind of just, uh, it was what you'd expect for a bunch of college guys. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I'm not opposed, I'm not opposed to the idea of separate dorms, but I think there should be an option for co-ed as well. Which, I like that Baker College did that. I really like that Baker College did that. That they gave us that option. Um, even if I personally didn't take it. <laughs> um, but, besides all of that. Besides all of that. With the dorm situation now going to happen at UA. I'm wondering, is Izuku going to have a roommate? And is that roommate going to be someone we know? Like, from the class? Or... Are they going to, like, mix up the classes? Like, could Izuku maybe, like, room with Shinso or someone? Could uh, Tetsu Tetsu and Kirishima room together? That would be amazing. I want that to happen. I can just imagine them, like, most the most aggressive dorm activities. Like, them aggressively vacuuming or aggressively, like, cooking eggs or something. That would be amazing, and I want that to happen so bad. <laughs> um... But seriously, there's so many possibilities for this, and I really, I, I kind of want to see, like, where they take that. I really hope they do go into the dorms. Like, 
you know what I mean. Like, I want the show to show that, to showcase the dorms, to showcase who our students are rooming with. Not like a lot. Like, I don't want them to focus on it too much. I want them to get to the point of the arcs and all. But I think it would be a fantastic idea to just build upon things. Plus, it could even uh, build up some new character dynamics between some that we haven't really had interact as much. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really excited to see where that goes. Um, but there's a lot that's going into this. Uh, but I'm going to end off with one last thing. I want to talk about the post credit scene. Um, so, we see All for One heading into... Tartarus, which is this maximum security prison for supervillains, basically. But he's having, like, this inner monologue going on about how Shigaraki is now basically in charge. How he is going to be taking control of things. And how he trusts that Shigaraki is ready for that. But, as a viewer, this is worrisome to me. Shigaraki is kind of mentally unstable. He kind of has some issues. He's very childish in his actions. He's very childish in his thought processes. Um, so I think that this could be interesting, but also kind of terrifying. Because with him in charge now, with him not really having to answer, or not even being able to answer to um, All for One at the moment, he's going to be making some decisions that I think could be very reckless and very insane. Um, I don't think he's an idiot, per se. I, I do think he has some intelligence to him. Um, and I definitely do think he's he even is growing. Like, we saw in uh, just a few episodes back, before the big fight with uh, All Might and All For One started, we saw that um, after Bakugo kind of blew up and tried attacking everyone, um... Or, whatnot, or maybe it was before that, maybe when he was just going crazy. We saw that, like, Shigaraki's like, no, don't do anything. And everyone expected, like, Shigaraki to, like, go completely insane. But no, he actually kept it back. And that's interesting. So I'm thinking he's definitely going to be a little more controlled. But I hope not, like, completely. You know? I want to see kind of, like, a blend of it. I want to see a blend of a little bit of control that he's gained while also keeping him kind of kooky, you know? Um, yeah, but I have no idea where this is going to go now, because that's a, that was a huge arc. That was a major deal. So, taking it from here, like, where are they going to go? Where could they possibly, uh, go after that? I guess we're going to have to find out. Um, so once again, there will be an episode next week, but the week after, July 7th, there will not be a new episode. Um, that will, that week there will be no episode, but the week after that, it will return. So it's going to be one week off on July 7th. Um, again, I'll probably talk about it again next week during next week's reaction. Um, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to see where this goes now. I'm excited to see what happens. And it's interesting as well. I, I, I just want to mention this real quick before we finish. It's interesting that All Might can still go into his muscle form, even if it's just for a very, very short time. I thought that would have been gone, but apparently not. That's interesting. I wonder if that's going to come up at all. If that's going to be like a thing. Huh. We'll find out. Either way, thank you so much for tuning in, and tell me in the comments below what you thought of this episode. What did you think of both Kyoka Jiro and Bakugo's parents? And what did you think of the entire scene with All Might and Inko and their discussion with each other? Tell me your thoughts down below, and thank you so much once again for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie Royal, and I'm signing off. See you all next time. And don't just live for tomorrow, or just live for yesterday. Just be glad for all you have that's in today. And though you've come through many obstacles, Shed tears.